Welcome to the end of season one of this channel. Over the past 15 episodes, I've gone into great depth about how to fight back against employment discrimination, what you need to prove, how to prove it, and how to make a complaint. If you can find an attorney, your chances of success get much better. In this video, I'll discuss the best way to find an attorney and explain why affording an attorney might be easier than you'd expect. I'll pass on some tips about how to manage your attorney once you've retained one, and I'll wrap up by sharing what's next for the channel. Even among attorneys who specialize in employment law, there's a wide range of skill levels. While an online search will quickly generate a list of employment law attorneys in your area, when looking for an attorney, you want a recommendation. Start your search by contacting local legal clinics and nonprofit advocacy groups. They may provide free legal consultations and possibly representation. They can also suggest reputable attorneys in your area. Here are some national groups that could assist you in finding advocacy groups in your area. You can also find this list of legal resources in the notes section of this video. Your local EEOC and state human rights organization may maintain attorney referral lists of employment law specialists. If not, try to speak with a government attorney or investigator and ask for the names of attorneys they respect. I dealt with many attorneys when I worked at the EEOC and it was very easy to identify the best ones. Attorneys handle the acquisition of new clients differently. Some charge for the initial consultation, but most will discuss a case with a potential client without charging a consultation fee. To help convince an attorney to take your case, provide your evidence packet as I previously discussed. The chief concerns for an attorney in deciding to take your case are often how much money they can make and how easily will your employer settle. To that end, your summary should emphasize the significant degree of discrimination Include a couple of sentences emphasizing the most flagrant discriminatory statements or acts. The significant degree of harm. Include a brief paragraph describing your damages which resulted from the discrimination. The size and wealth of the employer. Larger employers have greater financial liability and are more likely to settle cases for fear of bad publicity. Attorneys will pay more attention to what you tell them during your conversation than what you have prepared in writing. Just be aware that they will be particularly interested in these areas. You might have a great case, but not one that's worth a lot of money for an attorney and find it impossible to find an attorney. If so, you're not alone. It's because of you and so many others like you that I felt the need to create this channel. After an attorney has decided they will take your case, it's your turn to ask questions. Some topics you will want to cover are, who will be doing the majority of work on my case? You want to know whether the attorney you are speaking with will be doing the work or if your case will be passed on to a younger, less experienced attorney. How many cases specifically like mine have you handled? For court cases where you were the lead attorney, how many ended with a court verdict? While good cases usually settle, you want an attorney who has experience taking cases to completion through a lawsuit. What amount of compensation do you think I could receive? You can get a sense of what your case is worth by averaging the responses made by several attorneys. The attorney who stated the largest amount is not necessarily the best attorney. They may just be telling you what they think you want to hear. What are your fees? Are there other charges as well? How long will this process take? How often will you update me on the status of my case? Before making a decision, you may consider whether the attorney promptly responded to your phone calls. When speaking with them, notice whether they take the time to fully understand your situation and answer your questions. Don't feel like you need to hire an attorney immediately after your conversation. You can always say, I've made appointments to speak with a couple of other attorneys, but I really like you. Can I let you know my decision by the end of the week? After speaking with two or three attorneys, you should have a sense of who would be the best fit for you. Finding a skilled attorney is important, but the biggest concern for those contemplating retaining an attorney is how to afford one. 
Fortunately, employment law attorneys are typically paid on a contingency fee basis. A contingency fee is basically a cut of the winnings. The attorney receives a percentage of the amount of money gained in settlement or through a court verdict. A typical agreement will grant the attorney 40% of any settlement amount, except if a lesser amount was offered prior to retaining the attorney, that lesser amount is exempt from the contingency fees. In addition to the contingency fee, some attorneys require a client pay a flat fee. This retainer fee is generally used by the attorney to pay for court fees and out-of-pocket costs. The amount of the retainer varies depending upon the attorney, but $1,500 or more is not uncommon. If paying any flat fee is beyond your budget, local branches of the Legal Aid Society provide legal representation to some low-income individuals for little or no cost. Additionally, law schools often have legal aid clinics, which are free. Avoid hourly fees. In a contingency fee arrangement, the attorney has a vested interest in securing a lucrative award for you. An employment law attorney who is unwilling to agree to a contingency fee agreement is not a good choice. Additionally, the costs can add up quickly because attorney's rates are hundreds of dollars per hour. Be sure to put in writing any fee arrangement with an attorney. Your prospective attorney won't like it. But if more than one attorney wants to represent you, feel free to try to negotiate the terms of the agreement. Perhaps you want the attorney to waive the retainer fee if the case settles, or only receive 30% if the case settles before the attorney has filed suit in court. If you succeed in court, you may not need to worry about paying contingency fees because the court will award attorney's fees. Your fee agreement with your attorney should state what happens if a court awards attorney's fees less than the percentage agreed upon. If not, clarify in your agreement that the difference will be taken from the total verdict award. Even if you lose the most important part of your case in court, winning another significant part of your case will make you eligible for attorney's fees and court costs. An attorney typically has many clients and may not communicate the progress of your case as frequently as they should. Remember, your attorney is working for you. Don't be afraid to ask questions, stay aware of court deadlines, and touch base with your attorney about these deadlines as they approach. Your attorney may wish to accept a low monetary offer, discount an offer of reinstatement, or hold out for a higher offer for reasons unrelated to your best interests. If you are doubting your attorney's judgment, get a second opinion. If you need to fire your attorney, put it in writing. If your attorney acts fraudulently, illegally, or unethically, contact your state bar association. Congratulations on making it through season one. Next up, I'll be keeping an eye out for your interesting questions, which I'll address in short videos. For season two, I've started interviewing some amazing, nationally renowned employment attorneys for their advice to share here. I've been calling in favors to arrange for these interviews. One acquaintance of mine who helped me out said, someday, and that day may never come, I will call upon you to do a service for me. That's nothing I need to worry about, is it? Anyway, it will be much easier to approach some of these experts once the channel has had a chance to build a significant following. I'll keep doing what I can. Your help can also make a big difference. Your likes, your comments, your sharing of these videos. If you're in discussions with people who have experienced discrimination on other platforms, please let them know about this channel. And if you do, let me know below. The fight against discrimination has evolved over time. But one thing has remained constant, that those with less power in our society will continue to struggle for equality against those with more power. History also teaches us that the pursuit of fairness will continue to grind out victories against bias and historical privilege. Ever so slowly, the scales of justice will tip towards true. Until then, keep on fighting.